All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Multiplying Fractions. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to be multiplying two different fractions, okay? And it's actually gonna be pretty, pretty simple. Um, the way you do it is you're just multiplying your numerators. Okay, so you're just multiplying your numerators and you're multiplying your denominators. And when we do that, we are multiplying straight across. Okay, so you're just multiplying straight across. So this is really going to, 1 half times 5 over 6 really turns out to looking like 1 times 5 over 2 times 6. So I'm multiplying my numerators and I'm multiplying my denominators. Okay, so now that I have it set up, I can actually just do the multiplication and I'll be all done. I have 1 times 5, which is equal to 5, over 2 times 6, which is equal to... 12. So my answer comes out to be 5 twelfths. Now, of course, what I need to do, as I need to do with every single time I have a fraction answer, whether it's multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtraction, is I do need to make sure that my answer is reduced all the way to its simplest form and see if they haven't shared any common factors, factors that can help me reduce it. And as we look, 5 and 12, they do not share any common factors, so my answer is done. Okay, that is that is in simplest form, and the answer to 1 half times 5 sixths is 5 twelfths. So let's take a look at another example of this real quick. So I have 2 thirds times 3 fourths. Again, what we need to do is we just need to multiply straight across. Okay, so I'm going to have 2 times 3 over 3 times 4. 2 times 3, when I now I can simplify, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12. And I need to do that all-important step of checking to make sure that my answer is in the simplest form and that it's all the way reduced. Okay, And when I look, I have 6 over 12. I need to decide if they have any common factors. And they actually have quite a few common factors. I could use 2, Okay, I could use 3, or I could even use 6. And I want to use the greatest common factor. Okay, I want to use the greatest common factor. So I'm actually going to divide by 6. Divide by 6. Okay, Remember, whatever we do to the numerator, whatever we divide the numerator by, we have to do the same exact thing in the denominator to keep the fraction equal. Okay, So when I divide both of these by 6, I'm going to get 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. I get one half, and I know that because there's a one in my numerator, that this has to be simplified and, and it has to be reduced into its simplest form, and I'm all done. Okay, so my answer is one half. Now, there is something that we can do, and that is called cross reducing. Okay, if you notice, I have the same exact problem right here two thirds times three fourths. Okay. With cross-reducing, what we actually do is we reduce the problem before we get to the end. We reduce first, and then we multiply. Now, when I'm reducing first, I'm actually looking at this diagonally. Okay, I am looking at these diagonally. Okay, and I'm going to see, can I reduce, if this was a fraction, 3 over 3, can I reduce that? Okay, if 2 fourths was a fraction, can I reduce that? And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. So if I'm looking at just three, three, 3 and 3, okay, so if I'm looking at these two numbers right here, okay, I need to decide, do they share a common factor? And they do. Because they're both the same exact number, I can divide both of these by 3. So I can divide by 3, and I can divide by 3. Okay. When I do that, 3 divided by 3 is just 1. 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So I'm replacing those two 3's with a 1 over 1. Okay, because 3 over 3 is the same thing as 1 over 1. Now I need to do the same exact thing, but going the other way. So now I need to work with this 4 and this 2, as if they're the fraction of 2 fourths. And I need to decide if they share a common factor, which they do share a common factor of 2. So I can divide both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is just 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now I'm going to rewrite what I have, rewrite what I ever do. So over here on my left-hand side, if I'm looking at just this fraction right here, I reduce to a 1 
over 1. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite that. I have 1 over 1. And if I look on my right side, my right fraction, I have a 2 and a 1. So I have a 1 over 2. So I'm going to rewrite that as well. So I have 1 over 1 times 1 half. Now, this is very simple multiplication. Again, if we keep following our process of going straight across, okay, I do have 1 times 1, which equals 1, and then I have 1 times 2, which equals 2. 1 half is my final answer. And because I cross-reduced, I know that this is all the way reduced. I don't have to do any reducing in the end, and I get 1 half. Remember, we started off with the same problem, 2 thirds times 3 fourths. We got the same answer for both of them. We got one half over here, and we got one half, one half over here. So we can reduce in the end, or we can cross-reduce. Here's the benefit of cross-reducing, though. What if you have a fraction like this? One-third times six-sevenths times 14 over 15. When we cross-reduce, it makes the multiplication much, much more simple, and it also makes the reducing process much, much more simple. Because now, I can cross-reduce going diagonally any way I want. So let's look at this 3 and this 6 right here. I know that they share a common factor of 3. So I can divide by 3, and I can divide by 3. 6 divided by 3, that's just 2. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now I can look and see if I can cross-reduce anywhere else again. I have this 7 and this 14 right here. Okay, So let's reduce that. I know I can divide by 7. I know I can divide by 7. So this also becomes a 2. This also becomes a 1. Now I'm going to rewrite everything that I have. I have, again, 1 over 1 times 2 over 1 times 2 over 15. This is much, much more simple. Okay, now I'm not doing 6 times 14 anymore. I'm not doing 3 times 7 times 15. It makes my multiplication much, much more simple. So when I do this, I have 1 times 2, okay, 1 times 2 times 2 over 1 times 1 times 15. And when we multiply out, we get 4 over 15. So 4 fifteenths cannot be reduced anymore, and that is my final answer.